sent the human being into the world, into this dunya. And Allah Ta'ala sent the human being in such a way that first Allah Ta'ala decorated and adorned the whole universe for the human being. According to his needs, Allah Ta'ala created this world. He needed water. Allah Ta'ala spread out and sent the water out across the oceans and the seas. Allah, uh, the human being needed food. Allah Ta'ala gave such treasures, such vegetables, such produce. Allah Ta'ala has given the capacity to the earth to give food. He needed meat. So Allah Ta'ala created such animals. And the objective of those animals was that they will become the food, edible food for the human being. And in the oceans, Allah Ta'ala sent so many species of fish, so many, so many types of fish, and so many animals Allah Ta'ala created who lay eggs, who lay eggs. And Allah Ta'ala also created uh, animals whose, whose udders, the milk comes out. So much milk is available. A small bee, Allah Ta'ala manufactured the bee, and the bee now manufactures such a, uh, an edible food that gives shifa and gives cure. And it creates so much that no way in the world will you see a lack of honey. And you'll, you'll get all different types of honeys. And, that, and the bee gives this. And so if a person, if he looks around, there are so many na'mas of Allah. Why has Allah Ta'ala made all of this? Why has He created the world and decorated it and given all of these resources for the human beings, for me, for you, for Zayd, for Bakr, and for Rabia, for Zahida, for Abida? Yeah, these are names of people have, isn't it? So have we ever thought about this? We're, we're, we're eating, but think at least that this meat that we are eating... Why did Allah Ta'ala create this meat? And for who did He create it? And why did Allah put taste into this meat? For the human being. So be careful of something, that when there are so many rewards are given to somebody, treasures are given to somebody, comforts are given to somebody, when he's looked after nicely, then he must have a great objective, isn't it, that person? Most definitely the human being didn't come to this world for meat and chicken, and maybe one group of people have made this the habit, but no, the insan has forgotten. He just thought that we're here for eating and drinking, and this is our life. And just, uh, we've come here for this reason, eat, drink and be merry, and that's why we come to this world. If we think with the, even our aql, there's so much Allah Ta'ala has prepared in the world for us, and Allah created the human being, then is, does the human being not have an objective? Has the human being been sent just to roll around in the well, kulu, ashrabu, eat, drink and be merry? Is this the objective? Most definitely, Allah Ta'ala has, has created an objective for this world. First and foremost, Allah Ta'ala, He loves, imagine how much He loves the human being He's created. For whom? Allah says, according to His desire, I've given Him climate. According to His needs, I've given Him the weather. Different weathers, Allah, according to His need, I let the wind blow. According to His need, I let the sun beam down. I bring the moon out. 
for the needs of the human being. Allah says that I've given you so many things that you need that fulfill your need. So imagine how much Allah Ta'ala loves that human being, that insan. And there's re- one reason for Allah Ta'ala loving that because Allah Ta'ala has given him a great objective, a mission, a work, a task, a duty, a great duty. But due to the negligence of the world, in the negligence of the world and shaitan and nafs, they've made us lazy, distant, far. We've got a veil in front of us, in between, between us and our mission. We just spend the time in the life and we depart from this world in a very bad way. Subhanallah, Ramadan has come and has come to, to revive that feeling, the days of Ramadan, the nights of Ramadan, that you, this is not your objective. If your objective was eating and drinking, then why did I stop you eating and drinking Ramadan? And shahawat, why did I make your wives haram for you during the fast? If shahawat was your objective of life, passion, passion. Yes, so this is not our objective of life, eating, drinking. This is not our objective of life. The objective behind this is something else. And we have forgotten the objective. Allah has given us an objective in this world and doesn't matter how the dunya presents itself in front of us whether the dunya is in a high or in a low if there's health or if there's illness or if there's distress or if there's um, happiness or if there's poverty whatever the hal, the state or the condition of the world around us whatever the, the state confronts us Allah says remember that your objective should always be in front of you. Nothing should diminish your objective. If you're rich, the objective should be strong, clear. If you're poor, the objective of your life should be clear and strong in front of you. If you're in a good way, good fortune, you should know what your objective is. If you're ill, then the objective of life should still be in front of you. What does that mean? That if you've got happiness, even from the happiness, that you have to understand that Allah's rada, I, I, I need to attain Allah's rada. If you're poor, then you have to think that I am poor and through my poverty I have to please Allah. If you're ill, then you have to say, oh illness, due to this illness I have to please Allah. So there are both sides, both sides. Either through all those things, the ease, the comfort, a person can get lost in the world and just run after the world. But from every turn of life, everything that Allah has given, Allah is giving, rizq Allah is giving. If He's given openly or less, if He's in ill health or health, if He's given you uh, problems or difficulties, or if He's given you good health and good fortune, totally. So in every state, in every condition, whatever hal we have, changes happen, fluctuations come time to time, ups and downs, phases. In the morning is something, in the afternoon something, in the evening something. But objective keep in front of the Allah. Whatever hal I'm in, the state I'm in, but I will do one action is just to make you pleased. In illness I won't complain to you. In ill, good health I won't forget you. If I'm wealthy, I will not forget you. If poverty comes, destitution comes, and I'm down, sad, I will not run away from you. I will not be a renegade. If you give me more children, even then I'll consider them a ni'mah, and I'll seek your pleasure in that, and your happiness in that. If you give me just one, even if you don't give me one child, I'll still seek your pleasure, because you desire, you've made my life such, that through that you want to see, that does this servant of mine please me or not? Why? Because Allah Ta'ala says, وَرِدْوَانُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ akbar. Subhanallah. وَرِدْوَانُمْ Min Allahi Akbar. Subhanallah. The Allah says the biggest thing, the greatest thing that He's given to us in this universe. The Allah says, get greater than the whole universe and what it contains. What is it? The best is Allah's rada, Allah's happiness. To, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our main objective that Allah Ta'ala sent us to this world. And that's why Allah Ta'ala said, Thalika Fadullahi yu'tihi mayasha. Allah Ta'ala stated. That this is the total success. And in this Allah Ta'ala says, I will give you paradise, the akhirah, the hereafter. If we please Allah and depart from this world, then Allah Nas is in the Quran. <laughs> Oh,
Allah says, O oh my believing men, believing women, this is my promise. And today I'll fulfill my promise. Allah says, that you lived your life according to my pleasure. And when I sent you to this world, Allah says, you didn't forget your objective. I gave you assets. I gave you poverty. I gave you health. I gave you respect, honor. I gave you kingdoms, lands. And you also had tests and challenges. But despite all that, you put your objective in front of you. And you always sought out my pleasure. O oh, people of Iman, O oh, believing men, O oh, believing women, come the announcement that I made. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Subhanallah. Come. Allah says, come. And I will give that reward to you. Allah says, جَنَّاتِ adnin. Come. In these gardens, subhanallah, Allah, the gardens, Allah says, Jannati tajri me tahti al anhar. Look, imagine, we, we look running after things that are made of brick or soil or mud. We think that's what will be there. No. Allah says, Jannati tajri me tahti al anhar. There will be gardens there through which running waters will flow. There will be gardens such that imagine the, the flowers in those gardens, the, the roses, the daffodils, and the lilac. Allah says, جَنَّاتٍ تَجَرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ They will be gardens through which running water. Have you ever seen a garden in the world? Such a garden. There's a garden above and below. There are rivers flowing below the garden. Imagine this is the consequence of Allah's rada. Allah says, جَنَّاتٍ تَجَرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Allahu Akbar. And Allah says, beneath the gardens there will be rivers flowing. And run, uh, rivers will be running through the gardens. And Allah says, this is an example. Because your minds cannot imagine about those gardens. Your minds cannot contemplate the beauty of those gardens. Imagine the fragrance from that garden. Your nose, your nose cannot smell that fragrance, this is just an example imagine the beauty we cannot imagine will be of those gardens, imagine the colors of those flowers and imagine the gust of the, the, the wind and the fragrance, Allah says تَجَرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا anhar. And imagine those rivers that will be flowing beneath and through, the, through those rivers. I swear by Allah, if you take all of the beauty of the universe and put it to one side, take the most beautiful scene in the world and put it to one side, but the husn of the garden beneath which Allah's rivers will be flowing, rivers will be flowing. Allah says, Tahti al anhar, colorful rivers, beautiful, sparkling water, the beauty of the water we cannot imagine. Allah says, on top of that, that if you live in a house, if you live in a garden, and if you see that so great and brilliant, Allah says, Jannati tajri, me tahti al anharu, khalidina fiha, Allah says, khalidina fiha, therein to abide. And the most beautiful thing will be that Jannah, when you will be entered into paradise. Why? Allah says, wa'ada Allahu al mu'minina wal mu'minat. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Oh my beloved uh, believing men and women, Allah says, Allah, I have promised the believers, both men and women, you haven't lied. You had an opportunity. Problems were there in the world, but you did not lie. You were honest. Oh my believers, both men and women, my beloved men and women, I gave you illness, sickness, and, and ill health. But I swear by Allah, you had sabr. You endured. You didn't complain on the illness. You were happy in Allah's radha. Oh my Mawla, you said, Oh my Lord, whatever state you leave me in, I will seek you, said the believing woman, said the believing man. I gave you assets. And despite being rich, you didn't forget me in your heart. You still had that desire and yearning, Allah will please you through my wealth. 
I made you poor and I gave you poverty and you never complained due to your poverty. Always through your poverty you sought to me, you looked for me. Allah says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ So Allah says, How can I forget my promise? O oh, my mu'mins, O oh, my believing men and women, I, why shouldn't I fulfill my promise to you? Come, come towards these gardens, come to these great abodes. And Allah says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Abide therein. Allah says, وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً What is the quality of these gardens? Allah says, let me introduce you. Allah is introducing us to paradise. Allah says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً Allah says, the house for you in paradise, there's no mortgage, there's no rent to pay. Allah says, and you don't have, you're not a tenant, uh, no, do you have to pay any bills, no, do you have to give any rates for the year? Allah says, what's the rate? وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً So pure a house. And if Allah says it's so pure, it's goodly, a goodly dwelling, a great dwelling. Allah says, فِيهَا وَمَا سَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً A garden of perpetual bliss in your home. And Allah says about what in his kitab, he's mentioning this, this kitab will run until the hereafter. And it's been recited by every mu'min. Allah says, وَمَا سَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً Beautiful, good dwellings, pure, clean. And the next, Allah says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Therein to abide forever. Allah says, I've entered you into this home. I've taken you to this home. Above it are the gardens below, are the rivers. And not just this, Allah Ta'ala says, rather what? Jannatin. Allah says, Jannati Adanin. Allah says, this is not a normal garden, not the normal house. These are the houses due to my pleasure. Why? Waridwanum min Allahi Akbar. Because Allah's acceptance is the greatest. Allah said, I told you in the Quran, and you read that the greatest reward that will be in the hereafter, the greatest reward that I will give to you, Allah says in the hereafter, what is that reward? What will that be? My Rada, my acceptance, my pleasure. Subhanallah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Hi, hi. So look how we've forgotten Allah's radha, my friends. On taka, we sell ourselves. Little bit of difficulty comes, we start to swear to Allah. Astaghfirullah. We complain. We say bad to salah. Something happens against our desires and wishes. We cry. Illness comes, or some distress in the brain comes. And to get rid of that, we do those actions that Allah Ta'ala doesn't like at all. About which Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated that in this dunya I've sent to you. And the reason you've been sent, there's one maqsad, the objective. Allah says that all of these things, Rasulullah said, I came to destroy the, 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 the instruments that bang and make noise. With music we say, my heart is feeling happy. I'm listening to music and I saw a coronavirus uh, patient. He said, he said, it's such an illness. So why shouldn't we sit down and sing and bang musical instruments? And he put on the music and he's curing him with his corona. Oh Muslim. O oh Muslim, imagine, O oh Muslim. And this is about us. And here what is Allah Ta'ala saying? That my happiness and acceptance is all based on my, on my rada. And look, the things Allah Ta'ala gives to us, these are all trials, tests, if a person thinks, look, we have tests, challenges. We should make Allah pleased in this day and age, in this, in this era, in this phase that we're going through. All of the ni'mas of the dunya, all worldly treasures, are just for Allah's rada. There's nothing else greater than the rada of Allah, Allah's pleasure. In reality, paradise is for the pleasure of Allah, rada ilahi. The result of Allah's pleasure is Jannah. Subhanallah. Yes, look at the ni'mas Allah Ta'ala has given to us, physical, bodily, spiritually, all of the ni'mas Allah has given to us. And Allah has given us so many rewards in Jannah. Why? Because we will have earned Allah's pleasure. About this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these are permanent rada. May Allah give us the Sahih Hadith it stated, Allah Haq Ta'ala, He will call out to the people of paradise. O oh, people of paradise, O oh, inhabitants of paradise, Labbaik, they'll say, Labbaik, Ya Allah. This will be Jannah, Hadith of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah will call out, O oh, people of paradise, Subhanallah. Imagine, Allah's announcement will come direct to them. And you know one announcement, what voice, for example, the Qur'an I've just read. This is Allah's Qur'an, isn't it? Allah's call that comes to us and it, it awakens us, it jogs our consciousness, it gives us satisfaction. And that will be also another announcement that directly Allah will call in Jannah paradise. Oh, people of paradise, oh, Jannati, oh, all the Jannati, people say, Ya Allah, we are present, our Mawla, order us, instruct us, please. 
We are at your service. Allah will say, Allah will say, Radaytun, Radaytun. Oh, my people of Jannah, tell me, are you okay? Are you tik tak? Are you happy? After arriving to paradise, was my promise fulfilled? Are you happy? Did my promise materialize? And they will say, the response will come from the people of paradise. Ya Allah, how can we not be happy with you? How can this be? Is there anything that you have left and not given to us in paradise for us? What can be, there be the reason for us not being happy? They'll say, my mawla, my lord. What could be the reason for us not to be happy? Is there anything that has not been destined for us that we did not feel like wanting and we haven't attained? The thought just arises in our minds. We want to eat this or have this. Let me have this and that. Or such a uh, partner, a woman. Uh, and, and we just think this. Or, or the male or the female. And we just think this. And it comes. And Allah Ta'ala will say, Oh, people of paradise, that this is, this is nothing, this is just the start. Allah will say that you are those people, believing men and women who ple- uh, pleased Allah. Allah will say, come, there's a greater thing than this that I'm about to give to you. Subhanallah. Whatever I've given to you already, greater than this, there's one thing that I'm about to give to you, I want to give to you. And you will get that. And the people of paradise will ask, the Jannah is Allah, there's something greater than this? What, what can there be greater than this? There's nothing lacking, nothing we can see that you have not given to us. Will there be something greater than this? Allah will say, yes. Allah will say that there's something greater than this. Subhanallah. Allah will say, that thing, O oh people of paradise, listen, now I announce my permanent pleasure. My permanent pleasure and acceptance. And I send that to you, my rada, My permanent pleasure and acceptance to you forever. Never will I be unhappy with you. Never will I be displeased with you. When the people of Jannah will hear this, they will be so rejoicing and happy. Subhanallah. The greatest reward in Jannah will be this from Allah. Allah will say, go, I announce that your Rabb is also happy with you. Radiyallahu anhu. Subhanallah. Ridwan num min Allahi akbar. This this promise announcement will come in Jannah. But Subhanallah, Allah also rehearses this in the dunya with His creation. Allah announces this in the world. Allah announces in the world. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same call that he will give in Jannah to the people of paradise the old people of paradise today I am happy with you today I am happy with you forever and now I will never be displeased with you forever there will be happiness and pleasure that's been given to you bestowed to you granted to you this same call that in Ramadan today, now in Ramadan via the Quran to every believing man and woman, Allah is saying, announcing, O oh people, O oh people, believing men and women, today I've given you Ramadan. Be grateful to Allah, whichever hal you are in and you've attained Ramadan. Allah says in Ramadan, I've given you a great name, a great treasure, and that is called a Sayamu, subhanAllah, fasting. In the form of fasting, I've given you a great reward. That Allah says, I will give you paradise to the people of paradise. Just like I give paradise to the people, the inhabitants of paradise. Allah says, oh, believing men and women in the world, that this is one example of Jannah in front of you, Ramadan. And you are tasting that enjoyment a little bit. Why? Because Ramadan that's been created, it's for that qawm, for that nation, that qawm who I will address in paradise, that I am happy with you and pleased with you. Which qawm is that? Which nation is that? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Subhanallah. These are the muttaqis in the world. Those who are God conscious, who have taqwa in Allah. Fear in Allah. The person who is the muttaqi man, the muttaqi woman. These are those people who are jannati, who will be the inhabitants of paradise, who will hear Allah in the hereafter. Subhanallah in paradise. The muttaqis through Ramadan. These are the same people. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That I have given to the muttaqi such a great maqam status, my friends. Great maqam. 
that going into paradise, the muttaqi, these are those people of taqwa, who, it will be those people who go into paradise and they will hear Allah Ta'ala calling to them, Allah Ta'ala desires that today I want you to become those same people in Ramadan, via the fast, I want that you get this maqam. So how can we become this? Subhanallah. Allah says the fast will make you this. In the fast totally I have instilled this quality. That you will become those jannatis and eat taqwa. Taqwa will come into you. Lallakum tattaqoon. Such a great maqam a human being gets through taqwa. Look at this. Yes, all the people of paradise, these are the muttaqeen, my friends. That apart from being a mutta, aside from the muttaqeen, nobody else can go into paradise. So Allah has given us a great opportunity. And to become a muttaqi, what's the tariqah? as sayam fasting. Don't consider it a minor action. Do you understand? Through fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally has instilled the capacity, the capability in the practice of fasting through which a person can please Allah. Yes, Radai ilahi gives taqwa. Radai ilahi, pleasure of Allah, is, gives taqwa. So Allah Ta'ala says, pleasure of Allah is taqwa. So Allah says, if I've given you Ramadan to make you a muttaqi and so that you can end the pleasure of Allah, how can it be that there, there are not the ingredients in Ramadan that can make you and give you the quality of the, attaining the pleasure of Allah? So first thing that you'll see in the fast, the first thing we will see, obvious, commonly what we see is that if there's no radai ilahi, then there's no fast. If there's no acceptance of Allah, there's no happiness of Allah, then there's no fast. Remember, the fast, we put the objective in front of us that we want Allah's pleasure. If we start the fast and our objective is not to please Allah, then that fast is not a fast. That is not a fast, it's just poverty, it's hunger. During the fast, the first action within a person, the feeling, the objective that arises is what? I need to please Allah through this fast. Look, how? I have to please Allah. I don't want to displease Allah, I want to please Allah. So how does Allah get pleased? Allah gets pleased in this way. When we practice according to Allah Ta'ala's preference and His desire, the objective and the, the physical practice is given to us, then Allah will become pleased. Every moment I should have khawf, I should have the feeling that Allah, will you be displeased with me? Will I earn your displeasure? And this is taqwa. This is taqwa, this feeling, these feelings, this feeling and awareness that is Allah Ta'ala unhappy with me, will Allah become displeased with me? If I do this action, will Allah be unhappy with me? This feeling, this recognition, if we develop it within us, this is defined as taqwa and this is defined as radai ilahi. Yes, and this is what we define as Allah's pleasure, Allah's happiness, Allah's acceptance that fasting generates. Look, if you keep the fast, step by step we understand, if you keep the fast, and the most sinful of persons, if he fasts, he becomes a muttaqi. So the first quality that arises, generates with him, as soon as he says, وَبِسَوْمِ غَدِّ نَوَيْتُ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ Straight away the quality arises within him. So the feeling is arising that no, 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 no. I can't do this. I can't do this. I do, I, shall I spoil my fast? Shall I spoil my fast? Unconsciously, that he is thinking after uh, regards to Allah Ta'ala's displeasure, he's speaking to his fast. He, what he's trying to say is that I don't want to displease my Rabb. But through the fast, he puts the fast in front of him and he, because he doesn't have that much understanding, but the consciousness has been developed within him. You know, he says, no, no, no. Oh, I'll spoil my fast. In reality, what's he saying inside? No, no, yaar, my friend, I can't displease my Rabb, my Lord. I can't do this. I can't do this action. Subhanallah. In other words, what he means by saying, no, no, I don't want to spoil my fast, means I don't want to uh, make Allah unhappy. That's what he's saying. And so much caution comes into him, that even the biggest of sinners, he tries, that I don't want to do something impure, a dirty action, a wrong action, that spoils my fast. And then he hears words from the ulama ikram, the respected scholars, backbiting spoils of fasting, lying spoils of fasting. He listens attentively on these points, that which things breaks the fast. And if I consume medicine, if I put the medicine in my eye, does this spoil my fast? If I do miswag, will the fast be broken, etc. So much caution comes into his life, he's just worried all the time. That, oh, if a bit of blood comes out of my mouth, will my break the fast? If I be mistaken, there was water in my mouth, as my fast broken? So much caution, tell me, so much caution. What's he careful about in reality? And, and that my fast, I don't want it to break. And in reality, it's not that. He's not speaking about the fast. Unconsciously, he's saying that, is Allah unhappy with me? Am I earning Allah's displeasure? He's using the front 
the front and the name of the fast, but he's actually speaking about pleasing Allah. Because in his mind, the fast has overwhelmed his mind, but totally the fast generates and develops within this feeling, recognition of Allah. That would put together my mouth for a breakfast, if I do this action with my breakfast, a fast break, if I uh, take some chutney or it goes to my mouth for my fast break, small, small, minor things, he's aware, conscious, that I don't want to spoil my fast. But this is the rada of Allah, the pleasure of Allah, the acceptance of Allah. The, un- the consciousness comes into the man that if I do this action, will Allah be happy? Or if I do this action, will Allah be happy with me? Or if I leave salah, will Allah be happy with me? If I leave salah in congregation, will Allah be happy with me? Ya, if I take off the parda, hijab, will Allah be happy with me? If I start fighting at home, will Allah be happy with me? If I don't serve my husband, will Allah be happy with me? If my husband says that if I break the heart of my wife, will Allah be happy with me? Ya, I need the, the base, the, the basis of that person's life. He does every action for this reason. I don't want to displease Allah. And he knows, she knows, that this person is doing wrong, but he's not taking revenge on that person, that Allah will be unhappy. So for the sake of Allah's pleasure and acceptance, he will embrace the difficulties himself, but he won't allow displeasure to come to Allah. Severe illness comes to a person, and he's afraid that from my tongue, uh, I don't want to say such a word, that oh, if I don't rely on Allah, if I don't trust in Allah due to this illness, or pain, or distress, or sad, or fear, due to the fear of this illness, whatever, the, the pain that I get through this illness, that if I complain to Allah, he says, no, 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 no. Will Allah be unhappy with me if I say something wrong? Okay, fine, Allah's given the sickness, I'll persevere. So in other words, that illness... He, he, he balances and he weighs and he puts it on the scale of Allah's pleasure. May Allah stay happy with me. If I've got illness, khair. But I don't want to displease Allah. I don't want to complain. When this feeling arises and the fast creates this, will my fast break? Will my fast be spoiled? Will my fast be damaged? This is the practice in Ramadan. The Ramadan, the fast makes this practice. Just like today you've kept the fast and all day you've passed like this. That by spoiling my fast, will my fast be spoiled or damaged? Uh, or diminished the same practice Allah is making us do through 30 days if I do this action will Allah be happy with me just like I used to think through fasting will my fast break will my fast be spoiled in the same way the rest of the life the mu'min after Ramadan we need to think like this step by step we need to think like this I'm doing this action will Allah be happy with me now Will it spoil my relationship with Allah? Okay, let's give me wealth. Then, oh, for example, with my poverty, I have to please Allah. I'll try that through poverty, I'll do such an action. If I, if I do haram action to make myself rich, the, the means will be there in front of you. And you say, no, Allah has given me ghurbat, poverty. I don't want to displease Allah through this action. If through this means I earn... That if I do this action, will Allah be unhappy with me? If this becomes the pillar of life, the basis of life, totally in a person, every action, then tell me. There will be no arguments at home, there will be no fighting at home. The, the wife and the kids, there will be no quarrel. Because they will persevere and enjoy with each other and have patience with each other because they don't want to make Allah unhappy. Okay, okay, no problem. I won't say anything bad to my wife because I'm afraid that I don't want to make Allah unhappy with me that I said this to the woman. Okay, I'll persevere, I'll endure. The woman say, okay, fine, I'll persevere, I'll endure. That I don't want Allah to be unhappy with me. And this is called Allah for the sake of Allah's pleasure. And for this Allah has given the, the reward and fasting 100% creates this recognition and consciousness. If a person doesn't have this feeling, emotion after keeping the fast, that is my fast going to be broken, then he can eat everything. He can eat everything. He can drink everything. If that awareness and recognition, consciousness has gone from within him, that I can do whatever I want, that the fast will be broken, he can do what he wants. Do what he wants. But the fast creates the awareness that, will my fast break due to this? If I do this, will my fast break? And this awareness and recognition and feeling totally from morning till evening, his fast, it it journeys and it travels on this feeling. And the whole journey of life is pivoting on this. Whoever is aware of this and accepts that Allah, everything in my life, whatever, taking, putting on, taking off, taking, embracing, living up and down, whatever I do, I have to do for the sake of Allah's rada. I don't want to displease Allah. I have to live according to Allah's happiness and preference. I will do that action which Allah Ta'ala likes and He likes and He prefers and is beloved to Him. If I want to please my husband, if I want to please my... Uh, I'm not going to look out for the pleasure of my husband or my wife or my children or dunya or my relatives or relationships. I have to please Allah first and foremost. Uh, that if I think, if I'm, see, if I get the displeasure of the society but I get pleasure of Allah, I have no problem with that. That we have no objective with dunya. First pleasure is who? Allah's pleasure comes first. Just like we've kept the fast, 
And what's the foundation of the fast? Is that we need to please Allah. That's why we're hungry and thirsty. That's why we're stretching the fast out all day long. That's what we're doing in the night. We're praying taraweeh, 20 rakat, we're staying awake. What's the objective behind all this? Allah Ta'ala's radha. That's the concept that the fast introduces to us and this is the way we have to live the rest of our life. لَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That's what Allah Ta'ala has defined. I've given you fast. The first message and the first lesson for the fasting people is that they get the understanding, the consciousness of Allah's radha. This is how Allah Ta'ala becomes pleased with His servant. If only, if only fasting in Ramadan we understand and don't just take fasting one angle. Big, big, great messages Allah has put in Ramadan for the human being. Jannah, paradise, Allah, imagine here. That the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated that Allah Ta'ala has stated himself, Allah Ta'ala states himself that the human being, every deed of his is for Allah. Fasting, Salah, Hajj, Zakat, Sadaqat, Talawat, Recitation, whatever action um, a mu'min does, every deed is for Allah. Apart from one, so every deed a human being that is for himself, for his uh, benefit, for the human being's benefit, except for one deed, fasting, amazing ibadat, tawaf of the Kaaba, Arafat, going to Arafat at the Hajj, and Safa Marwa Sa'i, and going between Safa and Marwa, and Muzdalifa, staying Muzdalifa and Hajj, staying the night, great, great uh, ibadat, staying in Mina, great virtues of these amal, of these deeds, Allah has given us great deeds, but Allah says, all of these deeds, every deed is for you, you're doing this for your own reward, but one deed, Allah says, who is that for? That's just for me, that deed of fasting, and if that deed is for me, then this reward I will give to you, which I've told you in the Quran, subhanallah, the same as Allah has mentioned, وَرِدْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ You should live in the world like this, you should live in the world for the whole of your life like a fasting person. Just imagine you're fasting always. Then every fast that takes you to Allah's rada, His pleasure, then every second of your life should be fulfilled through the rada ilahi, through the pleasure of Allah. Just like that fast that has no pleasure of Allah, it breaks the same way those moments and seconds of life in your life, you don't have Allah's pleasure, then that time will be wasted and destroyed and gone to the wayside and broken. So Allah says, Jaza I will give to you. Reward I will give to you. Fasting is for me. Allahu Akbar. So think now that how valuable is this ibadah. This ibadah Allah said that I will give you the rule for this. So why is Allah Ta'ala said this? Behind this there's a concept that is the greatest objective that Allah Ta'ala has given to us. Rudwanum min Allahi Akbar. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala says, why is he attached this fast with himself? It's for me, Allah says. Why? Because the objective of fast, the objective of fast is that it takes you, because you desire Allah's pleasure, Allah's acceptance directly, the, the practice of fasting, it takes you straight line to Allah Ta'ala's pleasure. It makes you repent, it makes you desire Allah's nearness, it makes you desire Allah Ta'ala's happiness. Allah says, you are making me happy through this. That may Allah, you be happy with me. Ridwanum min Allahi Akbar. Subhanallah. For this reason, Allah has given the greatest reward, that your objective is that Allah Ta'ala becomes pleased with us. So the foundation of the fast is Allah's rada. What a great objective. Great objective. Look, when you keep the fast tomorrow, when you keep the fast, then think about it. Think about it. Allah, this life, this fast in Ramadan, make the near that the rest of my life as well, Allah will observe the fast, the lessons of the fast. Just like I did all the actions during the fasting day to please Allah, I'm not eating, I'm staying hungry. The same way the rest of my life, all the actions I'll do, Allah, is for your radha, for your pleasure. Just like 30 days, ayyamim ma'adudat. These are short days. Short days, and in reality, 80 years, even if you live, you will think that you live for a very short time. 30 days of hunger and thirst will look long for you. Allah says that, ayyamim ma'adudat. Allah says your objective is being generated. There's a few days, life is short. Just like one day you fasted, foolish person, live the few days of your life like this. If you live the few days of your life like this, then see what great rewards Allah Ta'ala set aside for His servants. Subhanallah. So may Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq, ameen, wa akhuru da'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.